should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. Preferably in a residential area. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Voted as best local podcast in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. You're listening to Hoppy Hour. You're tuned in to Hoppy Hour, an hour where Hoppy rants about something. Sit back and listen in. Hoppy Hour is on now. Hoppy Hour is on now. What's up? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And for the next hour, my goal in life is to change the way you think about things. For the next hour, I want my rant to make you think about things differently. Because that is the goal of Hoppy Hour. I want to entertain you, but I want you to think about things differently. So to get into contact with me, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can download my app in the Google Play or iPhone shop. Search up Hoppy Radio, and you can listen anywhere in the world. And when I'm live, you can chat me. Shout out to Ryan Gibbons from the Danny Bonaducci Show for hooking me up with the interview with the one and only badass known as Danny Bonaducci. Shout out to him for coming on the show. It was a lot of fun last night. And shout out to Lex from the Lex and Terry Morning Show for coming on last night, and John Auville, a.k.a. Cakes, from the Junkies on 106.7 The Fan. Danny Bonaducci was the 102nd guest I have had since August, and it doesn't even feel like it's been 100 interviews just because I want to make it so badly in this business that I just take each day and I keep on grinding. I swear to God, this next rant I'm going to talk about, I couldn't even believe that this article was real news. You would think this would be in the onion, but even the onion wouldn't carry this because there's no humor in this. This is unbelievable. This is astounding that this is actual news and some scumbag leech of a scientist feels this way. All right. As you guys know, before I get into the article, I'm going to set it up for you guys because this is real personal. What I read and when I saw this, it made me so angry. It hit my heart. As you guys know, my dad died of uh, leukemia in November 2014, the day before Thanksgiving. He had cancer. He was fighting it. He was doing good, but then he began doing yard work. And that kind of made him sick. And then he would drive to the doctor's office all the way to Chicago. And we lived in the suburbs. So basically, he probably could have lived. But he was such a hard ass that he didn't want to be non-independent. So I kind of think he sort of killed himself by not listening to their orders. But seeing a Roman Catholic who didn't have the best luck in life get cancer was one of the most heartbreaking things for me. And I know people who have had cancer and who have beat it. And getting cancer is one of the worst feelings for them. And I have some radio friends who their loved ones are going through it and just got diagnosed. So whenever I see the C word, that fucking bitch of a word, trust me, I take it personal. So I saw this on my uh, Twitter timeline this morning as I was getting up, and I had to wipe my eyes. I had to wipe the little sand out of my eyes to make sure that this wasn't a fucking joke. And I never swear on my show. It's got me really mad. Like, I think this is the reason why I am on, like, six hours of sleep. This really got me mad. I could not go back to bed. And this is from The Independent. What would a world without cancer really look like? I don't know. It would be better. People wouldn't worry about, am I going to get cancer tomorrow? And then the people that do get cancer wouldn't say, oh, my God, life is short. I'm going to die. Life would be longer if there wasn't cancer. I mean, to even begin the article this way, Andrew Griffin of The Independent, it must be a slow news day and you're a lazy-ass average journalist. For you to even stoop to this level of journalism, good riddance. It says, 
the big idea. There are better ways of spending some of the money that goes towards research to cure cancer, according to a leading medical expert. And this leading medical expert probably has the personality and probably has the likability and has the intelligence of the excrement that my cat lays each day in her litter box to even imply that we're putting in too much money into cancer research. How about you get cancer, buddy boy? And then you're going to be saying, oh, I think the time and effort they're putting into it might be worth it, you scumbag, you moron, you lazy-ass expert. You have no idea what to talk about, so you're like, ooh, I'm going to be outrageous and wild to make some headlines. F you, buddy boy. All right. It says here, and it's in bold letters, it's the beginning of the article, why are we asking this now? Because it's a slow news day, Andrew Griffin of The Independent can find something to talk about, and this scumbag of an expert wants to spark outrage. It says here, discussion of a cure for cancer has hit the news as scientists announce they have found cancer's Achilles heel, which is good. People won't die then which is good. Even if people survive cancer, they won't have to go through that streak in their life where they think they're going to die of it. In what way is there a negative impact of beating cancer? This is a sad case of journalism in 2016 where they don't know how to come up with angles. So they spark these fake opinions just because they're so lazy and they're not that smart that they don't know how to come up with articles. So they just go with the wacky other side of the opinion. It's really sad. It's really pathetic. And I look down on any journalist that does that. It's fake. The WWE is more real than this type of lazy-ass journalism. Like many other treatments, the new development offered a hint at full cure for the diseases and a glimpse at a world without cancer. A world without cancer. I wonder what that would be like. It would be more people not dying at such an early age. It would be kids not suffering when they get leukemia at age six. My dad would be alive. Some of my radio friends that are going through it with their loved ones that are sick. Right now, they wouldn't have the 24-7 stress of the idea of their loved one dying. I don't know. The idea of cancer not being around kind of sounds like a unanimous decision of it being positive. But this scumbag of a writer and this scumbag of an expert, they're just taking the other side. Screw you. You're nothing but a lazy moron. But hoping for such a world and spending the billions of money that goes to the research towards it might be wrong. According to this imbecile, this dirtbag, this cretin of a doctor, Dr. Richard Smith, a former editor of the British Medical Journal, he caused controversy when he said in late 2014 that cancer is the best death and we need to quit wasting billions trying to cure it. Well, number one, you moron Richard Smith, number one, before I even get this rant going, there's no good way to die. There's no best way to die because nobody wants to die because I don't believe in God. So once you're dead, everything's over with forever. So here's how I view it. Just live your life and be glad that you're not dead. How about you, Richard Smith, you so-called expert, you go to any hospital, go to the front desk, say, can I see someone with leukemia and read your results of why you believe in this and say it to their face, you pussy. When my dad was alive, you should have called him and gave your opinion on this, you pussy. But no, you're nothing more than a disgruntled piece of dirt who used to write for the British Medical Journal, and now you're not there anymore, so you're trying to find any way to get attention. And I have nothing but disrespect for you. I've never heard of you, but if I saw you at the bar, I would say this to your face. You're an imbecile. You're a dirtbag. Many of the people who would be prevented from dying of cancer would go on to die of other problems. Well, no, duh. The sky's blue. Taxes, death, and Lindsay Lohan being an imbecile. Those are the three things that are guaranteed in life. Of course you would die of something else if you didn't get cancer, you dim-witted idiot. 
And shame on Andrew Griffin from The Independent for even picking this up as an article. The hell's wrong with you? Of course you would find another way to die. Unless that movie from 2002 made by Disney, Tuck Everlasting, comes to life, we're all going to die. I would rather die in my sleep than die of cancer to the slow process, you morons. And they say spending money on cancer research could perhaps be more effective used to reduce poverty. I mean, that's a point that's decent, but like poverty is never going to go away. But I feel like cancer could be prevented in maybe 100 or 200 years. So next headline here in bold letters because they're so outrageous. Why wouldn't we want to cure cancer? I want to hear their reasoning of why they wouldn't want to cure it. So here it is. There is very little dispute that working to prevent and treat cancer and help people live longer, healthier lives is valuable work. But this cretin, Dr. Swift, thinking about cancer points, out some of the other effects that process has, including prolonging a life which doesn't bring happiness. Exactly. You're at least alive. Prolonging a life is the key word here. Even though you're not going to die of cancer, you'll die of natural causes or something else. I would rather be frail and 98 years old. I want to be like my grandpa who died at like age 88 in 2010. And he was there till his last minute on earth, till the last time his body could deal with it. My cat died at the age of 17, and he was there till the last second. I want to be that type of soul. I want to be that type of living being. Even if I'm unhappy where I get old and I'm like 82 years old and I go, is this my last day? I want to be that where each and every day I fight to be alive. I don't want to die of cancer, you imbecile of a doctor. You must be alone. You must be antisocial. You must be a loser, and no one loves you. If you're saying this, if somebody like, let's say your dad on the eve of Thanksgiving dies of cancer, you wouldn't be saying this, but you're probably privileged and everything's happened in your life. So screw you. It says here, much of the work that has been done already has turned cancer into more like dying of being old. So it goes on and on. Yeah, he's really well spoken to this riveting doctor. Living a longer life of being unhealthy. Is that progress? Yes, it is progress. How is this even a headline? I don't have hoppy TV up, but right now I'm shaking in my chair. How is that not progress? Each and every day, we should treat it like it's our last. So how is that not progress to live another day? When I woke up this morning, I was like, oh my God, it's another day. And I was on the front porch with my cat as she was rolling in the grass. Like you have to appreciate each and every day. This must be some lonely curmudgeon who doesn't like the idea that he's gonna die alone because no one's ever loved him. So he's trying to take the outrageous route. What's wrong with getting older? You're gonna be unhealthy. Unless you're like, let's say, um, Carl Weathers or Arnold Schwarzenegger or Patrick Stewart any of those celebrities that are in great shape, you're going to get unhealthy when you're older. It's unpreventable, morons. Oh, my God, is this getting me mad? He said lots of the people who die from cancer would probably die from one of the number of other afflictions soon after. So even if you survive it, let's say you beat cancer, but then you do die of one of these afflictions a year after. That's another year of being alive on this earth. That's what I don't get about this guy's point. It's like, does he want to die? Does he believe in an afterlife? Because these are the weirdos that believe in an afterlife. These are the people that go, oh, God's here for you. There's a reason for everything. It was meant to be. Like I heard that all the time in my dad's wake. Because my family's Roman Catholic. And I heard over and over, it was God's calling my dad was 51. Shut up. Oh, it's a part of God's plan. The advice I liked the best was life is hard. Life is short. Appreciate every second. Your dad was a good man. I didn't like that force crap where they try to find a reason why God took my dad's life at age 51. 
I just find this sickening. Like, it doesn't make any sense. He's like saying, well, if you don't get cancer, you're going to die later on and be more frail and unhealthy. That's what happens when you get older. But at least you're not worrying because you have cancer. The world has made a huge amount of progress towards prolonging human life, some of which has included work on cancer. But that has come with what is called the comp- the compression of morbidity. People's lives are longer, but more and more of their time is spent in ill health, which would be expected. I would say you have a one in a million chance of being 90 years old and being in perfect shape. My mom's a home nurse. When I've met the patients, some of them are like that. But of course, if you get older, you're going to be in worse or health because your body is deteriorating. So the only way you can prevent your body and your mental self from not getting old and unhealthy is, I guess, dying from cancer. Dr. Smith, you piece of shit. It says, but then people who die at age 90 and 95 have dementia. No, dog, because you're older. He's basically saying at least when you die of cancer, you're at a better mindset than when you're 95 and you die of being frail. He must be some religious nut job who thinks that whatever happens in life, if it's hard or not, we're going to get blessed in the afterlife with heaven's gate as we go up there and God greets us and we bow down to him. And he says, now one time you watched porn. Can I be, can you forgive me? That was a weird analogy. My point is when you go to heaven's gate and everyone says that we beg him for forgiveness, that's not going to happen. I don't believe in heaven. And I just hate these nut jobs who let their religious beliefs go with actual facts and common sense. It's like, fuck you. He says, there's also a part of a possibility of heart failure or respiratory failure. But that is a messy death. And how is cancer not messy? My dad on his last day on earth was coughing up blood and he was having diarrhea. That's not messy. Going through the treatments of leukemia or any type of cancer isn't messy. Fuck you, dude. You lazy ass wannabe doctor. You're probably unhappy because the British Journal dropped your ass. So you're trying to think of a way. To be relevant, you're trying to think of a way that people will remember you. But trust me, if you're going to these lengths to get attention, nobody cares about you. You're not interesting. Nobody likes you. And it's sad. And shame on the independent for even having this as an article. And now you're saying this. But Hoppy, you're giving the article the time of day. This is different than me when I used to rant about the Kardashians, but then I realized me giving them PR is PR. Listen, I find this sickening, and I don't want this type of attitude, and I don't want this type of mindset to spread. We need to appreciate each and every day. And even if we die at the age of 90, We're going to be frail. We probably will have dementia. But the key is to be in shape and to always be positive. If religion does it for you or meditation does it for you, fine. Before this piece of fucking shit wannabe doctor to say that we'd be better off leaving cancer because it's a better death, nobody will ever love you and you're a wannabe. There's this guy named Jason Kinder or Kinder, who is a big supporter of me from uh, Cleveland, and he sent us a chat live here at Hoppy Radio. He said, dude, my mom has been battling cancer for three years and is not doing good right now. This is the hardest time of my life. But of course, Jason, this is better than if she lived to be 90, according to this pussy of a doctor. Exactly. It was sarcasm. I hope you know that. And we got some tweets here at Hoppy Radio. Tweeted me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Someone said, hell yeah, speak the truth. I beat cancer, and I hated every second of it. Yeah, trust me. Karma will hit this guy. By no means do I ever bless cancer on anybody because it's a morbid thing to do. But I get the feeling that karma is going to hit this guy just because he's got this weird attitude. And frankly, he's kind of a creep. Happy hour. Happy hour.